And Sherry caught up with a UNICEF spokesperson who is inside Ukraine to get a firsthand look at just how desperate the need is there. And she's here now. So what did you hear, Sherry? Well, Lauren, I spoke with Tony Fricker, who absolutely is in the western part of Ukraine right now. And he told me that the conditions that he's seeing there, and he has traveled all around the world into war-torn areas, is some of the worst that he has ever seen. In fact, an air raid siren went off during our interview. Take a listen. Yeah, in, in areas where there's heavy fighting, the situation really is horrific. Um, we've heard of, of power has been cut, the water is off, the water network has been very badly affected across the whole east where there's been a conflict going on for eight years. So UNICEF is trying to sort of do some water emergency water trucking, provide some equipment that can make some very quick repairs to infrastructure and, and then bring in relief supplies, other relief supplies like first aid kits, medical equipment um, and emergency sort of food rations even to areas that are really badly affected by fighting because people have essentially been cut off uh, for weeks. And, and you can't live in those conditions and no child should have to live in those conditions. Toby, what can you tell us about the situation in the countries that are surrounding Ukraine who are working with all the refugees that we're seeing? Yeah, so more than 2.2 million children now have fled the country uh, across into to neighboring countries. And, um, and the situation there is equally uh, difficult um, and traumatic as, as, as children and usually with their mothers or with extended family members because they left their fathers behind uh, in Ukraine are, are, are moving on a very uncertain journey, a new country that they probably don't know. They're, they're meeting distant friends or distant relatives potentially if they're lucky. Um, and many do not know where they're going. So UNICEF has set up uh, what are called blue dots. It's like a one-stop shop where people can get information and, and guidance on, on, on transport, accom accommodation options, and also uh, sort of information about the risks of trafficking. So when you have so many children and women on the move, there are massive risks to trafficking, gender-based violence. And it's about having that information as well and being aware of that. But it's also about UNICEF working with local authorities to make sure screening is done, to make sure that those children who are on the move are with someone who's caring and nurturing for them, um, ideally their mother, or if not, it's a, a family member, but making sure that they're with someone who's, where they're safe. Lauren, we've all seen those images, and I can't help but think about the children who are below ground with their mothers in the subway, and once it's safe enough for them to emerge, imagine when they realize that their hometown is gone. It's, I mean, it's life-changing. Their mm -hmm. lives will never be the same, no, and the no. images, like you said, they're just getting on a train going where, and yeah. they're hungry, and yeah. it's just unfathomable. It truly is, and, and that's why we're definitely helping here at the station with this whole day of fundraising. Yes, and if you would like to make a donation to help us, you can just point your cell phone at the camera, or your cell phone camera, rather, at the symbol on your screen right now, and this will take you straight to the UNICEF website. You can also find a link to it on our website, wlns.com slash here for Ukraine. And as always, be sure to stay with us here at at 6 News on air, online, and through that 6 News app for the latest on the Ukrainian invasion.